Hey everyone, this week we're asking, do you need a flash for macro photography? So I made a video a little while ago about using lighting for macro photography and I'll put a link up top to that one if you want to go back and watch it. In that video I was mainly using constant lighting, it was aimed at beginners really who might need to improvise with torches and things like that, but today we're using a flash and we're asking do you really need to use one? So I've come out to a local area this evening, it's just before golden hour time, it is quite bright but it's intermittent really, it keeps going grey and there's some rain as well, but either way I am going to get some benefit from the flash and I'm definitely going to get different images compared to if I was just using the natural light. I've got Otis with me today, he's got a camera on his back so he's going to be the guest videographer today and I'm hoping to get some footage as he's running around. So let's head in now, see what we can find, I'm hoping there's some spring flowers or leaves and things like that, maybe some insects, who knows. But we have had some snow recently which is a little bit unseasonal and I think that did destroy some of the flowers but we'll see what we can find and hopefully get some good shots with the flash. So it is very different using a flash compared to the constant light. With a constant light, obviously, as the name suggests, it's constant and you've got that light shining on your subject the whole time. And as you move around, you can see how that light is falling and illuminating your subject. With a flash, you can't do that because it only illuminates for a very short flash. But when you use a flash, that's a really intense burst of short light and it's much brighter than most constant light sources, which means that you can benefit from increasing your shutter speed so you can often use your camera handheld like I am today but it also allows you to narrow your aperture and get more depth of field and also lower your ISO so you don't get that grain in your image So when you're using a flash you need to think about the power output, when it's at full power that's 1 over 1 and then you have it a stop of light each time so 1 over 2, 1 over 4 etc. Most of the time at the moment I'm using 1 16th or 1 8th maximum power and that's about right I feel at the moment. You don't want to overpower your subject with too much light or create blown out highlights etc. In terms of camera settings I'm using a shutter speed of around 1 250th of a second. You don't want to go too fast because you might end up with an effect where you get half of your shutter in your frame so because you've got a really fast burst of light 
your shutter speed might be out of sync with that and then you get half of the shutter in the frame obviously really dark and blocking out a lot of your image so that's not ideal my aperture's around about f8 i'm going anywhere between 5.6 and f11 that's giving me a reasonable amount of depth of field and i'm trying to stick to iso 64 if i can when i'm using the flash that's not a problem when i'm not using the flash i'm having to bump my iso up to anywhere between 2000 and 6400 that's just so I can get a fast enough shutter speed to hold the camera handheld without any camera shake. So you can see there's a massive difference there between using the flash and not. And that's one of the real benefits of using a flash. I'm also using a diffuser, as you can see, because I don't want the really harsh light that can cause reflections on wet leaves or ladybird shells or things like that. So a diffuser will just soften that light, make sure there's no really harsh highlights. What you find when you're using the flash is you get an almost studio-like effect. And that can be good or it can be bad, depending on the effect that you want to achieve. I'm gonna get some photos of the ivy that's on the tree here. And because the ivy is quite waxy, it's shiny, and that's gonna reflect some of the light. Even though I'm using the diffuser, it's gonna reflect light from the flash. So we get quite a dark, rich image. The blacks are quite dark and rich, but we get those really harsh, bright white highlights from the flash. If I switch now to aperture priority, put my ISO up to about 4,000, at f7.1, turn the flash off. That's giving me a shutter speed of about one over one, two, five, which is not too bad. I'll take the shot now. You see, we've got a much nicer shot there. The blacks are not quite as saturated and the highlights are not as prominent and we don't get the shadows created by the flash. So it is a very different effect. Sometimes the flash is going to give you the results you want. Sometimes natural light is going to be better. When you've got nice golden hour light with that sun coming in low, the nice golden orangey glows, that can look great as well. Also backlighting your subject and the natural light can really be what you need in those circumstances. So have a play around, see what works for you in the situation, bring a flash along, you might get use out of it, but you might also want to stick to natural light as well. So one very particular effect that you can achieve with flash is a dark black background for your subject. So I found these things here, I'm not really sure what they are, kind of dried up pine cones. If you know what they are, maybe leave a comment down below. But basically, when I'm shooting these without flash, you can get some separation anyway, because it's macro, you've got amazing depth of field, you can get that blurred out background. But when you're using the flash, all that background is really dark because you're illuminating your subject, which is close to the camera and everything else behind that is falling into darkness. And so that can be a really cool effect and worth playing around with.
So as you can see at the end there, Otis really enjoyed it. Got a little bit muddy, but he got some great footage as well, so I think we all had a great time. I'm not really used to using flashes for macro photography, so it was great to get out and try something different. Although I have to admit, I think I do prefer natural lighting or constant lighting. But it is really useful to get that look of the dark black background or that studio look with the flash. And I did really enjoy some of the benefits that you get from setting up the camera with the flash. So you can use that fast shutter speed, the narrow aperture and the low ISO and you can use it handheld. That aspect of it is great. But yeah, overall, I think the natural light is my preference in how the images look. But we asked the question at the start, do you need a flash for macro photography? And I think the obvious answer to that is no, of course you don't need one. But you can get some effects that are just not achievable when using natural light alone. So I think in future I will be going out with the flash. I'll try and stick to natural light where possible. But for those occasions where I do want that strong dark black background or that studio look, then I'll get out the flash for that. But I'm interested to see what you think, so leave some comments below. Let me know, do you prefer the flash look or the natural light? And we'll see what everyone's opinion is on that. I've just got a few more images to show you, so I'll put those up on screen now. And so that's about it for another video. So massive thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. I know I say that every week <laughs> and I'm aware that after 150 plus videos of saying that every week, it sounds a little bit insincere, but I really do mean it. Huge thanks. And if you subscribe, that's great. If you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the big red button or over here on this picture of me. And that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.